So I wonder, what's the question that Jesus asks us this morning? Well, it seems to be quite simple. Will you trust me to set you free? Will you trust me to set you free? And what could this look like? Well, 74, it's a life that then being set free, we are rescued from a hand of our enemies and enabled to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Set free to serve. Let me tell you about Sue. Sue is a salt of the earth lady. She's in her 60s. She lives in Leighton in the East Ends. Um, Sue is holding her family together. Her daughter, uh, his marriage is falling apart and the daughter has abdicated responsibility of the children. So Sue finds herself looking after four little children. But the most amazing thing of Sue, above all, a, a woman who delights in Jesus, who has been set free to serve, is that she spends her time looking after her father-in-law. And let me tell you about her father-in-law, Les. He's 93. Um, Les is one of the most bitter, angry, ungrateful men uh, I I know. Um, every, uh, for two years, I would have Sunday lunch with him. And yet watching Sue with him was amazing. She would listen to him. Everyone else would, would give up on him and go and watch the TV. She would wait with him and hear his story for the 57th time of the time he won a game of bridge on a cruise 40 years ago. Again and again. You see, having been set free by Jesus... Set free to serve. Sue now looks at Les like Jesus looks at Les. Uh, Jesus' concerns are now Sue's concerns. It's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Set free to serve. I wonder what that might look like for us. What that means for us. Maybe we're here today and all this stuff about being set free by Jesus, it's all quite new. We're not quite ready to say, yes, Jesus, I trust you to set me free. Please do say. Maybe we're not quite ready. Well, thank you so much for coming along today. Uh, please do keep asking your questions. Why not, 1st of January, 8 o'clock Monday in here, we will be having a time to think about some of those bigger questions in life, having a little bit of food, and asking some of those questions. Very not intense at all, very easy, very casual. Or why not, as a Christmas present from the church to you, why not pick up a gospel at the back? Luke's gospel, we've just begun, chapter 1. Why not continue reading the eyewitness testimony of what this horn of salvation is really like? His power. This person. Why not talk to somebody afterwards? Or maybe we're here and and yes, we've said yes to Jesus. He is the one who has set us free. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Or do you notice Zechariah's response here to that? The prospect, because he's looking forward, the prospect sets his heart on fire. In the midst of despair, he rejoices. 68, praise to the Lord. And what's caused him to come to that point? Well, he's been reading his Old Testament. He's been thinking, who is the one who is going to set me free? It's this horn. And we now know it is the horn is Jesus. And so only Jesus sets us free. So why not now, and little bits of paper in front of you, and, and, and the pens around, write down with me those five words. Only Jesus sets me free. And with that piece of paper, stick it on, slap it on the front of the fridge. Every time I have a cup of tea, open it up, get a bit of milk. What do we see? Only Jesus sets me free. And pray it into our hearts that we are deeply changed such that we rejoice like Zechariah. Ah, it's similar to Sue. Similar to Sue. Ooh, 74. 
and to enable us to serve him, that's Jesus, without fear. Set free to serve. That Jesus' concerns become our concerns. Now, 100 yards down the road is a council block. I have yet to see a single person from that council block come into church. What do we think Jesus' concerns are for them this Christmas? He came to the lengths, uh, he, the lengths he went to set us free was to his death. That's how much he cares about us. Do we think he cares about them? Of course he does. Set free to serve. To see them as Jesus sees them. To love the unlovable. Oh, I wonder. Have a think. Maybe, maybe there's some things that we have that we can serve them with. Maybe our time. Maybe our help. Maybe our money. Maybe our clothes. Maybe our friendship. So do you know what we're going to do? At three o'clock this afternoon, we're going to meet back here in church. I've got lots of wrapping paper. We're going to... Um, wrap up some presents, maybe even go and buy some presents. I've got some spares, if, if not, but why not have a think about a gift that they might like to receive? Come back and wrap them up. And we're going to go and serve people by giving them gifts and inviting them to hear about Jesus, to be set free by him. That's in the short term. Over the long term, s- sign up. If you would li- sign up on the sheet at the back, if you would like to love people like Jesus loves people. Yeah, it could be a whole range of things for us, but, but what about for you? What about for you? We're going to have a little bit of quiet now. And in that moment, ask God to put his finger on one thing for your life. That being set free by Jesus makes a difference to you. Let's have a bit of quiet. I wonder what that one thing is for you. But, but check it, just, I mean, just imagine with me. Imagine if we all said yes and went home from this and, and, and did that. Imagine the difference it would make to, to us as a church family, the way we treat each other. Set free to serve. Only Jesus sets me free. I'm set free to serve. Wouldn't we then love and serve each other? I mean, that'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? That when our guests and friends and family come into church, they think, oh, why, why do you guys love each other like that? Can, can you imagine a change? And then actually going out to the council block and others and walking past the 10 million pound houses to the 10,000 pound box. And people say, well, why? Oh, because I've been set free by Jesus to serve. I don't want to serve them like Jesus served me. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, just, just, just think of the change. Just, just think of the impact. Think, think of the people who would come in and ask, why? Why are you doing that? Oh, because of Jesus. And just imagine with me, you know, through the door of death, and there we are standing before the glorious horn of salvation, Jesus Christ himself, and delighting and rejoicing. And we're standing next to the people from the council block, our next door neighbours, and each other here, who have been changed and have come to be set free by Jesus as well because of us, because of the way God works in our lives, because Jesus set us free to serve without fear. Wouldn't that be amazing? And do you know what? It's possible. It's possible. Do you want to be part of that? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you are the horn of salvation, 
who has come to set us free, set us free from sin and death and the feeling of being weighed down and oppressed. Thank you so much for the life that you bring, the freedom in service and the prospects we have of an eternity with you. Lord, we long that there would be people there with us who are rejoicing in you because of the way you've worked through our life. Please help us. Help us do that. Help us go and visit these people. Help us love them. Would you love them through us? Thank you so much for setting us free. Amen.